we are going to take a look at how basic number structures apply to encryption. This will be a simple overview. If it makes you curious, I'll point out to you what you should study to learn more or understand at a deeper level. There is a branch of mathematics called number theory where you can learn all about very interesting things that you can do when the structure of numbers are understood. Before the number theory experts got involved with encryption, both a sender and receiver of an encrypted message would have the same key. In public key encryption, the person sending the secret coded message can use one key to encode the message, and then the receiver can use a different key to decode the message. We are going to look at the math behind a coding method named RSA encryption. RSA stands for the names of the three people who discovered how this works, Revest, Shamir, Adelman. This method had been discovered before, but it was classified because this method of encoding is too hard to break. This is the Cayley table for the multiplication mod 5. You might remember from our last lesson that a Cayley table shows you all possible products of the numbers in the set. The result of multiplying two numbers mod 5 is the remainder you would get if you divided the product of those two numbers by 5. For example, 3 times 2 equals 6, and 6 has a remainder of 1 when divided by 5. Now remember, a number multiplied by its inverse always equals 1. When the mod is a prime number, like 5, every number also has an inverse. Do you see how 3 times 2 equals 1? This means that 2 is the inverse of 3. 4 is the inverse of itself, because when taking 4 times 4, mod 5, you get 1. Prime numbers and inverses are relevant to public key encryption. 4 is not prime so not every number has an inverse mod 4. You can see that 2 does not, for instance. There is no 1 in the 2 row. But 3 does have an inverse, because 3 times 3 mod 4 equals 1. Once again, this is because prime numbers are special, and numbers that have inverses are handy, even when you are not dealing with a prime modulus. We know a thing or two about the relationships between mods, factors, primes, and inverses, thanks in large part to the early number theory folks, especially Euler and Fermat. Trust me that what they found actually works and has been proven. I'm just going to show you how it works. Here is how RSA public key cryptography works. You start with two prime numbers, P and Q. Let's use 2 and 7 in this example to make it easier to follow. The product of p minus 1 and q minus 1 also plays a role. We need to compute two numbers that we are going to call n and t. The numbers we need to use are n equals 14 and t equals 6. These numbers have very special properties in modular arithmetic. So t is equal to 6. Therefore, we need a number and its inverse mod 6. There are actually an infinite number of choices we could make. Let's use e equals 11 and d equals 5. First, convince yourself that 55 equals 1 mod 6. Euler and Fermat figured out what we need to know to give us this formula that always works. The scout sends b to the power of e mod n. The receiver raises it to the power of d and computes mod n, and is therefore solved for b, which is the message. Just to recap everything we've done, here are the important numbers. p and q are the primes that we selected. n is their product. t is the special number that is the product of p minus 1 and q minus 1. e and d are inverses of each other, mod t. The public key that the spy will use to encrypt a message are the two numbers n and e, in this case, 14 and 5. The cryptographer back at headquarters who will decrypt the message will use the two numbers n and d. This is the private key. And even if the enemy intercepts the message and knows the public key, they will not be able to decrypt the message because they don't know and can't compute d. 
Let's say you are a scout, and you are to send a 2 if you see the enemy coming by sea. Your public key is 5 and 14. Remember that 5 is the number that has an inverse mod T, and 14 is the mod that we're using. Knowing these numbers will not allow somebody to decrypt your code if they intercept it. Raise your number to the fifth power and compute mod 14. You send a 4. The villain who intercepts that cannot reverse engineer that 4 to get to the 2, because infinitely many numbers equal 4 mod 14. The private key was 11 and 14. If we raise 4 to the 11th power and compute what that is mod 14, these numbers are going to get big fast, but Excel has a mod function and makes this easy. And it turns out that 4 to the 11th power is 2 mod 14. So now you know that the message was 2, and therefore the enemy is coming by C. In review, we start with two prime numbers, P and Q. T is the product of P minus 1 and Q minus 1. E and D are inverses of each other mod T. Then B to the power of E to the power of D gives back B modulus P times Q. Knowing E and P times Q does not make it easy to break this code if P and Q are large prime numbers. The branches of mathematics that study relationships and structures of sets have not been seen as having practical applications for most of history. They tend to be called pure math as opposed to applied math. Only recently have practical uses of pure math, such as RSA encryption, been developed. The field of pure math has many opportunities waiting to be discovered.